Hey guys, welcome back to Park Attack. Today's episode, we're going to be venturing into sheer cliffs. The description reads, These ancient cliffs were once a popular tourist destination, but now lie dormant. Work some amusement park charm into this small space and bring back the crowds. So the goals are 500 guests in the park. It seems pretty achievable, actually. 200 guests in park, that is a that must have a reward, I'm going to check. Uh, no loan debts, okay. And then... Uh, complete by year 3 of December, which I'm completely ignoring. But I think this scenario is based off of one that's in Willowcoast Tycoon 2 called Whispering Cliffs, I think? I didn't check before recording, but I'm pretty positive it's that. <clears throat> um, so here's the entrance. I have a suspicion that these ones cannot be deleted. Yep, they can't be deleted. These are just a structure of some sort. I'm going to maybe try to incorporate this into my theme. But so far, here's our cliffs. Wait, how high is this? Um, I can't tell how many units this is. Actually, I can just measure with walls. I actually want to know how high this is. So here's my wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten and a quarter. Ten and a half. Okay, that's pretty high, actually. And it feels very tropical in here. That's what I would think. So I think I'm going to do a theme around um, Havana and Brazil. Let me see what my theming... I oh, I don't have much theming at all. I have no... Wow, I have nothing researched. Ooh, oof. Okay. So that is in a priority, is to research themes. Uh, right, let's do my ride check. Uh, observation tower, okay. Top spin, twister, good. Junior and Wild Mouse. Not a good coaster selection. Half the research coasters off the get-go, probably. Let me just do that right now. Coasters, and we'll spend 100 bucks right now. No transport. I have a feeling you'll get the elevator, because this would be one of these scenarios that will benefit from an elevator. And then Log Flume. That's pretty basic. But the idea is to do, like, Havana slash Brazil South American architecture, because I feel like this is very South American. And it's architecture I haven't really touched on yet, so if I do like a little village up here with some flat rides and then maybe do a Havana like fortress that kind of hits sits on top of the mount cliff here. It kind of makes some maybe streets that go down toward the bottom. Can I do terrain? Can I actually change terrain? Let me see here. Oh I can. Sweet. Okay. How much are 30 30 dollars a tile? Ouch. Actually, that's normal, because default's 25. Actually, that's normal. Um, yeah, I think that would be the objective here. Um, the depot here is pretty covered up, but I think there's some deco. Yeah, it's just the path. It's not... Can I destroy the path? I can't. Okay, so I can do that. Let's see here. What else is around? Dude, again, with the scenario, there's like really not much to it. Besides building off the side here... And yeah, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a Havana slash Brazil. I've said this now three times. So let's uh, get on building this uh, interesting map. Okay, let's get started on um, Sheer Cliffs. Let's, so the first things first is to get my color palette down, as usual. This is what I usually do in every scenario so far. Helps with... Um, decision making when you already have that down. So the first couple buildings I needed to um, get my bases down for what this whole map was going to be about because it's going to be Havana slash cube. It's more Havana actually because the main concept art and reference I was using this round was from Overwatch and the Havana, the Hav Havana map. Havana, Havana. And I was just going to copy those buildings basically here to cover up the, or kind of merge the um, entrance, because the entrance cannot be deleted. So I needed to figure a way to incorporate that into the design. I could have changed the colors of that building, actually. Yeah, it's just, it, it is what it is. I, it doesn't necessarily need to change, but it was just kind of the thing to do. Let's see here. We're working on um, 
yeah, just a couple buildings. This, these buildings are kind of like um, built well quickly right here. I'm doing some uh, making some windows using pieces from Parkitect and then importing those into the image uh, pieces. So everything that you see here is built in Parkitect. That's what I was kind of going for. So I made shutters. I made those arched windows. I learned that from another user. I forgot their name, but there was like many years ago. They used the sign and put it at the top of the arch to make a new type of window. And it's a very smart idea using the image signs to make new windows. When you when we only have two, well, no, we have three types of windows in the details tab. It's a very ingenious thing to do. So I did the same and it, it worked out really well. I, I kind of repeated that technique a couple more times. I want to try to utilize signs like that more often just to add more flexibility to vanilla building. So over here is a quick little um, wild mouse that I built for generating money. So if you're always curious how I do some of these like crazy builds in these scenarios, it's because I build little groups of rides and corners while guests are doing their thing, going on rides, being happy, you know, paying for it. You don't see it. It's usually off camera. And so that's why I just decided to do this round just to build a quick little coaster to generate me money because it's like $12, $12 to ride that coaster. That is like buco bucks in, yeah, it's just buco bucks. There, you just make money. So you can already tell, I, really, I think I pulled out a loan. Yeah, I pulled out a loan and then I continued building the little town, like this downtown area of Havana. Added some street stuff, some palm trees, some other details that are related to a city. And just wanted to make this like um, a miniature version of Havana. That's why I was like, okay, this is going to be like a little Havana. That was the name that was that I thought about. And again, when you when you think about a theme park, a theme park is a representation of a real place, and it doesn't have to be that accurate. So that's the objective here: is to make it pretty close to my re reference pictures and the feel. What I'm going for is that Spanish colonial architecture. And so once I got that feeling down, that I don't, I don't. I'm not worried about the translation, so kind of goes from there. So right now, this building here is going to be uh, Club Palm Tree. I think that's what I called it. There's a little cool little image that I made. I don't think you get to see it in this time lapse because I think I forgot to record it. But I got to, I built the logo for it. It's a palm tree on a little island. You might see it pop up in a second. But I made that in Parkitect angled it to take a picture and then edited it in uh, paint.net to make a proper image and again i was on that that kick of using images to further add detail to the game or to this park and also on this side of this building i was going to leave it blank and add pipes but then i felt like it needed some like street art so the street art is basically turns into um What's it called? No, it's just street art. Yeah, I just wanted to make a flamingo. Again, the flamingo is only because of Robo Flamingo. He's like one of my favorite builders. So it's kind of like, ah, easy. Flamingo feels like beachy themed. Havana's on the beach. It's kind of like Florida, but not really. Uh, it just kind of was the, the thought process in my head. And so that's what I did. And there's actually some, it was fun to work on this one because there's some um, sign shenanigans I was using some of the text to get some of the legs that I wanted. And then this number seven was the neck of the flamingo. The only annoying part about using these text pieces is that their hitboxes are quite large. They're rectangles or squares. They're never they actually the shape of the letter or number you you type in. So there is that annoyance, and it's a little annoying to work with. That's why you can see that sometimes I've deleted that seven like several times now. So yeah, it's a little annoying, but eh, it is what it is. It works out. And I say the execution of my flamingo looks pretty spot on. It looks like a flamingo. It feels like a flamingo. I am quite happy with the flamingo look. 
So quickly, uh, we're expanding down toward the um, water's edge. So I did some rock work quickly and it made a staircase that leads down. Nothing special about the staircase, it's just a staircase. That is the only thing that I was going to do. You can see the collection of rides on the side has grown because I wanted to generate more guests, make more money. Even though I'm sitting on like 19,000, it's still a good pile of money to use because scenery, building in this game with scenery is not as expensive. The expensive pieces are like your trees, your rocks, and some other bigger prop pieces. But if you think about like a, a four, a simple wall building, it's not that expensive. I think each wall is like, if I can see on the uh, video, I think walls are like 14 or 12 bucks each. It's like not that expensive. No, actually they're cheaper, they're like nine bucks each. Yeah, they're not that expensive. Same thing, well shapes get expensive when you resize them. Shapes, let's see, the smallest one, 0.10 is a dollar. And then a two is like, I wanna say like 20, but I'm not, I, I'm not sure. I don't normally look at prices when I'm building, but it's something to always keep your eye on. So you quickly saw me work on a building and then delete it. That is a normal thing that I normally do. It's okay to start over. And I, I, I just want to let you know that it's okay, yeah, it's okay to start over. It, it happens sometimes as you build and design stuff that it's not clicking and it doesn't work. So don't be afraid to destroy it because you've already spent this much time already on it. So the funny thing about this scenario so far is that I actually made a full on different type of downtown main street type of area on this map. Took me maybe two hours to work on it. I just didn't like it. I deleted and I started over. It happens. It, it's the same thing with this building that I'm building for the uh, motion simulator. This is going to be a cotton, um, like a cotton factory. Yeah, cotton factory. This one's like modeled after Anno, uh, one of the buildings from Anno 18, 1800. Because I also use that as my reference as well. Because that's a really good resource to pull from for buildings. Because everything is already in an isometric view. And Parkitect already is in that view, so it kind of helps translate between the two. I've, I think that what helps the most in you getting reference pictures for your design, for especially for this game, is um, isometric viewed games or other games or Lego sets. That, that Those help do the translation, because sometimes doing the translation in your head, you get stuck on trying to translate it and then you get nothing done. So I'm trying to stay away from that. So as I continue building this cotton, yeah, cotton factory, I use some bushes as like raw cotton and there's the cotton rolls being rolled up with um, wagon wheels as the spool. I thought that was kind of a cool um, little technique. And it's just a generic building. Also, I didn't even talk about the, um, the new tile roofing that I figured out. I'm using tires because for some reason the tires in vanilla can be placed pretty precisely on the horizontal, no, on the vertical, um, uh, what, what do you call it? The vertical placement. Yeah, vertical placement. And so I decided to try that out. The only thing I, I can't do is make it different colors to make it like it's weathered because the tires will Z fight with each other. So we're just gonna make it one solid color. It works out. It's a different tech. It's a different texture because I'm always looking for texture for my roofs because I don't like the plainness of a plain roof. That's why I do the different colors to kind of break up the the the, the plainness. I, I don't know. It's just something in my head that tells me it doesn't look good. So that's why I try to do the staining or add a broken roof or add dirt to it because not all roofs are pretty. <laughs> there's no, there's, there's just not possible. And I want to add some realism to this game just a little bit, even though Parkitect is like a very cartoony toy based game with the scenery being very clean. So as I ramble about roofs, I built a dive coaster that goes right off the mountain or the cliff. And this coaster will be basically the fort 
because I wanted a fort like Havana, because Havana has a fort. Again, I'm I'm taking a lot of things and things liber not, not not liberty. What's the word? Um, not deliberate. Not that word either. I had a word in my head and then it just poofed, disappeared. But um, not necessarily focused on making this realistic. It is again. I I, I explained earlier that it's like a miniature version of Havana, so I'm going to warp it a little bit to fit the map because no fort will be built that high on a cliff i don't think that would make sense it probably would be at the bottom closer to the water's edge but i needed a building for the coaster so the fort is what happened and here i go and build the fort um this coaster actually is, i think one of my better performing coasters because it runs four trains it has your station, a block break, and an, another station platform, and then there's a mid course. So actually, I think I can run five, but I choose not to because I want the trains to not stop during the ride because I've had the point where the train was stopping mid course and the train would slowly go through the rest of the course very slowly. I didn't like how slow it was going, so I, del I removed one train, but four is the limit on this coaster particularly. So, fort buildings, very basic. Um, rectangles, diagonals, um, stone corners to suggest it's mason work. And then these specialized windows that are kind of like slit type windows because you don't want arrows to fly in, I think. I think that's the objective. Again, I don't necessarily research a lot into fort building, but I'm just kind of mimicking what I saw on my reference pictures. Um, building some battlements. Um, I also did some tile roofing here with the new, with the tire pieces again. It's the same thing. And then the cliff side, I'm going to completely cover in those tannish rocks and do a gradient from light to dark tan because I wanted to try something new with rocks. So I normally don't change the color of my rocks. Usually it's the same color all around, maybe uniformed. But I wanted to try out making it a little different. And I like the effect from light to dark kind of makes it more interesting to look at not as boring but as you can see i'm just doing some more mason work and then figure out more battlements and then figure out how to build this uh, entrance to the fort the fort was based off of the pictures from overwatch it's like the last point on havana and a little bit from no, Anno didn't have any, like, fort pieces. And they may, might have. I don't think I had them. Come to think of it. Yeah, but just going to build some type of fort type of thing. Just kind of complete the area. Because you have one side as my downtown area. And then this is the fort where it's more historical. So that's why I kind of leaned on to the more historical bit. And again, I think the name of naming this park Little Havana just seems to be appropriate. So this this base is actually oh yeah, I kind of you can kind of tell guests are kind of bleeding through the uh, walls. I'm got I ignore that now when I want to try to make things more organic or off grid. I know it's kind of weird when guests are walking through a wall, but I wanted the arches to be the main focus because those arch pieces are very hard to use because of how big they are. If they were, well, they are scalable with um, construction anarchy. So that would be fun to kind of mess with if I do. No, when I do the um, uh, diorama build challenge for this round. Yeah, I can scale those pieces. I just thought about it. That's really cool. Um, onward to building some just adding some cannons for detail adding some turrets those uh round cylinder building spikes or spires i think they're called turrets and then on to final finalizing the color of the coaster because i had to decide what color i wanted add some fake supports to help some of with the track being all weird because supports generated or got deleted when i built the coaster so I had some fake ones with some pillars, just to give it some more realism. I've custom supported a coaster in vanilla. It is not, it is not easy. I don't recommend it. If you want to custom co support a coaster, 
you have to go mods. You have to either go with the support mod and or with um, construction anarchy or transform anarchy just to you know mess with pieces to make proper supports. And then on to the lighthouse of this fort, because the fort in Havana is a lighthouse and a fort. Is that it was an interesting combo. I was like, okay, I didn't think that was a thing. So might as well copy. Don't have to really reinvent the wheel. I mean the fort here, the layout of my fort is really doesn't match the one in real life. It's kinda like a an homage to it. It's not gonna be accurate. And I'm taking um, artist liberties on it. I'm just gonna be like, oh, okay, it looks like the fort. It represents it, but doesn't have to be real. And also quickly add my last flat ride for this session. So this is the top spin. I relocated it when I had the pile of rides and I built a, I think an awning for it as well. But I'm just finishing up the rock here. So we're going to quickly go over to the park in our break and see how the park is running. And I'll explain my next phase of plan for the next part of the park. Okay, let's go see how the park is running at the moment. Let me push play, because that would be helpful to see how the park runs. So in the last time lapse, I worked on finishing up the castle with the lighthouse, and then finished up the back end here with the top spin that I moved from down below here, because this was my pile of flat rides to help generate cash, because that has some, been some of my strategy in the last couple of campaign levels, is to just do this type of make a pile of rides, get my customers in, make some money, and then with the money that I generate and have a pile of, I can just build whatever I want at this point. And that's basically it. I have like $48,000 year 13, which is like a long time, but I've been going slowly at this because this is a theme that I normally don't work with and finding out my mojo and the stride of building this has been quite challenging and no, it's been just quite challenging. It's a good good challenge. So here's the um, drop coaster. What did I call it? El Gato? Oh yeah, no, I basically, it, Gata, uh, Gata? I think I, I, it's Spanish for drop, so I just basically call it the drop coaster. So that's fun. So I went with the orange scheme, orange and green uh, track scheme, and then basically finished this. So the plan for the next section is to, I need to fix this. So this lower part here, needs to go up by half a block. Half a block meaning like this. I need to go up half a block to make the proper harbor slash pier area that I wanted to do. So this has to be re redesigned right here and then this break room needs to go up a block or half a block. So that has to be changed too. So that's a little bit of like, um, well at the pause of the game, move the guests out of the way and do a very, like very, I don't know what you call it. I'm losing words here, but I just need to figure out just to do it really quickly. So again, that's not as hard, but th with the guests, the guests here are the problem. So I have to pause the game, phone them out. I might even just do, um, just block the top area because I can close the bottom here. Yeah, you know what? We can close the bottom here because it is no longer, we need these rides anymore. I'm going to get rid of them. So let me do signs, go to the top here, put this down and do no entry for everything. Even um, employees. So the plan is they will funnel themselves out. This area will be completely blocked and ready to be redone. So the bottom here will be pushed up by half a block. These rides will be deleted. I want to build a brewery that I wanted to do in the beginning because the brewery was going to be built up here where the uh, cotton shop is. So the brewery will be down here. I think it's going to be a junior coaster station. Unless there's another coaster I can use that would be better to use. Oh, monorail. Hmm, monorail sounds different. I haven't really built a monorail a lot lately. And there's some designs I can copy like the Jersey Devil trailblazer wonder woman has a pretty cool layout i will think about it but i think monorail coaster would actually fit if i built the brewery this way rectangle yeah like up against the mountain or the cliff and then build the layout kind of sprawling in this area right yeah 
And then what I want to do is maybe delete this island or push it toward the edge of this curve of this track. Yeah. Turn that around. I'm going to go mark because this usually helps. So if I, if I built the island just to be on the edge of this, right, I have now more water to kind of play with. I want to build some, like, boats and some, like, yeah, some, like, fishing boats, maybe a sailing boat. We'll see if I get there if I'm not too lazy. Kind of fill out the area because the top's done. Like, everything up here is done. We have our little Havana. We got our cotton facility. We got a fort. It's all basically done on top. I just need to flush out the bottom and filling it out with one other coaster and then maybe a couple more flat rides. I could cheat by building some stuff in the mountain because honestly if you look underneath I can build a flat ride somewhere right and then just go from there so yeah this is so far the plan so the plan is let's just reiterate the plan is to lift this concrete spot up a half block get rid of these flat rides build a brewery with a I'm going to go with a monorail coaster yep monorail coaster and Maybe a new... Oh, I need to make a new set of shops, too, because the food shops are up here. And this is such a long walk from here. I would have to build a new set of shops. So I would have to do that, too. So a little harbor area, like... Yeah, a little dinky little pier harbor area would, would, be, would be very appropriate. And then I need to figure out a transition from here. So if I was thinking about... Actually, I just thought about it just now. If I make a little entrance here to a cave... I could fit one flat right underneath, like let's say maybe a twister or a sailing ship can go on the water easily. Do I need more of these? I have motion simulator over here. A Ferris wheel? Nah. I can even stick a carousel underground just because it's something for them to do. Because I still need to generate the... 500 guests. I am capped right now because of how many rides I have. So I need to do at least a couple more attractions. A, a coaster will probably push me over, honestly. The monorail coaster will push me over. Yes, it will. So yeah, that's the next project is to fix this area up and add the harbor area and the brewery that I wanted to do. And maybe hopefully this map will be done. It's been a it's been a hot minute since I've been working on this map. But yeah, let's get on to building that um, harbor and brewery. Okay, on to the next phase of construction. So like I said in the break, I was going to up the... The... I don't know what the... I'm losing words again as usual. Um, bricks. I'm going to raise them up by half a block because I wanted to make sure that the docks didn't touch the edge of the water because that would look weird so I said I was going to do that I did it as some d two docks or piers to add some interest because this is going to be like some of the harbor area of Havana and then I wanted to build a brewery for the monorail coaster because I knew that I needed to get one more coaster in this park to generate the 500 guests that I needed because everything else about the scenario was easy and very easy to achieve. So 200 got you the dive coaster, I think. And then no loan debts. And you get that immediately when you open the map. So that is a that is an easy one to win. Even though I got a loan out, I repaid that off instantaneously. I did that and then I knew I needed to build a couple more rides. So the... Yeah, monorail coaster needed to be built because I haven't really built a monorail coaster in this campaign playthrough at all. So I want to try my hand at building some type of coaster. But the brewery is based off of a again Overwatch map. Overwatch was a I would say it was the the carrier for <laughs> this scenario. They 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 did the heavy lifting on most of my reference shots that I used to get the feel of Havana. And I also pulled from real pictures too because I don't just use one resource. It's a mix of pictures from different places like video games to real life to concept art. You just kind of pick everything. 
So with this building, you have your mason work for using cubes. You, I'm using the hanger pieces with the overhanging uh, roof pieces just to add a difference. The smokestacks are just smokestacks using cylinders. I use some uh, steampunk pipes to add some different chrome texture to them and then pipes. And onto the coaster, the fun part about this was I wanted to see if I can do a diagonal chain lift and kind of keep the ride in a diagonal formation. Kind of break up the grid again. And also I only had this limited space here because I bought all the land. So I didn't have a lot of space to kind of do much with. But the benefit about monorail coasters is that they're very flexible in doing a lot of combat, compact layouts. And so that was fun to do. I like the, um, I used to call it a ram's horn, how funny. It, no, it's a cobra roll. <laughs> uh, it looks like a ram's horn to me. I probably have said this before in like a, a video a while ago, but it looks like a, a ram's horn, <laughs> how funny. So I built the coaster and after that was kind of, I was happy with the outcome. I focused attention on some downstairs restaurants because it would be kind of mean of me to have my guests walk all the way down those stairs go on a ride and then walk all the way back up the stairs just to get a bite to eat and so i had to build a pizza shop and a soda stand and these buildings were ripped from anno 1800 because there's like a spanish this is a spanish civilization you can play as and i just pulled concept art from the art station and just kind of mimic the buildings that I had the picture of and so this is like a yellow mason work type of building colonial base it's kind of the same thread as the buildings up above I just wanted to, it a little different to give each building its own characteristics but yet in the same vein as the main theme I was working working towards so that's always the thing I'm fighting is making sure my buildings are different to each other and not repeats but yet have the same thread of the theme I'm working on so there's always a little tricks you can do with variation by changing the color a little bit maybe adding different gingerbreading to make it different from its neighbor so like this building is gonna be my two my three-story yellow building the building next to it's gonna be my green building that's only goes up I think only to the second level, so it doesn't go as high. So I don't want to build two of the same building next to each other. I would just, it looks weird and it looks like it's just carbon. It's just copying, yeah, copy pasting. It's not, doesn't look in, intriguing enough or interesting for the user or the guest in, the, in this case, because it is a theme park. See, I think that's the, the thing about theme parks is that when you look at a, Let's say, hmm, what's a good example? What's the recent thing that got built? Oh, um, World of Frozen in Hong Kong, Disneyland. Yeah, Hong Kong. All the buildings are different from each other. Every single building next to each other is different and everything's at an angle or at a curvature. Kind of just makes it look organic and different. And kind of like um, that sense of disbelief. I think that's what theme parks do is it it treads the line between realistic and fantasy and it's just enough there for you to be like oh yeah i believe it i believe this could be real but you know in the back of your head it's not real that's what i'm trying to do with most of these parks when i build in park Attack, is that it has that sense of disbelief like okay, yeah i can believe this could be real but i know it's not so onward as i um talked about theme park philosophy um i built quickly a green like ticket booth, information booth type of thing. I saw it on the map of Havana from Overwatch. And then I wanted to build a fishing boat to be in the harbor. Because if I didn't have a boat, it kind of looks empty and boring. Nothing too special about this boat. I found a concept art on ArtStation that was kind of cartoony. And I was like, oh, that matches Parkitex style. I'll just do it with shapes. And you've seen me do this numerous times again. Build a boat. And it's out of shapes i don't know what else to say about them they're just it's fun to do i find them fun once i get the my mojo going i use strawberries as netting again as usual that's always a fun piece to use i want to try to use the strawberry piece more in 
just not just nets. Maybe I can use it as something else besides nets and also besides strawberries. But that's a fun piece to use. But this is just a, a typical tugboat of some sort that is a fishing boat of some sort. So you have your wench with the net. You got some pipes. You got some boxes and barrels. Yeah, it's over exaggerated in parts of the boat, but I think it kind of matches the style of where I'm going for it. Again, that sense of disbelief is what I'm achieving. And then the last thing I needed to add was add a sign that says Little Havana because this front area wasn't much incorporated into the build. So I just had to go build a ride. So it's funny because there are trees here and I found a way to delete all the trees by building a giant oak tree and it was just big enough to go over the park border to delete the trees in front so I can build this sign. It was kind of a cool little technique. So if you don't like trees on the edges of your map, just find a bigger tree and if it reaches, it will delete that tree. It's kind of a technique I use. So it's a quick little sign. It says Little Havana. I matched the colors of their flag. Nothing too crazy. It's a very simple build. And that's it for the map. And so we're going to go take a quick... Oh, uh, quickly. I made some lamps using candy canes and peppermint. But let's quickly go jump over and go see how the park is running. Okay, welcome to Little Havana. And we're just going to explore the park. But first, we're probably going to win the goal right now, which I'm waiting for 500 guests. Yep. Now, do I just... Does it complete? Do I win? Yes, I win. Haha. -ha. Okay, cool. There we go. Little Havana or Sheer Cliffs is now done. So let's go explore my little dinky little park that I had such a difficult time decorating because I picked a theme that was completely out of my comfort zone. But that is a good thing because being out of my comfort zone, I learn some new things about how I design stuff and how to get over those creative blocks and all that good things, well, I mean, all those things that, that are involved in designing theme parks. So here's a little area in front. So Little Havana was the last thing I added to the park. I just needed that one little dinky little touch of detail that kind of s signifies what this is, it's Little Havana or a little dinky little representation of this town in Cuba or the main town, main city. Uh, I didn't realize that these buildings here weren't, weren't de destroyable, deletable, so I kind of have to leave them there. But kind of just venture off to the first little street here. We got the little streets of Old Havana. So Old Havana's architecture is like a colonial slash... Oh, I forgot. I, I looked it up and then I forgot what I looked up. But it's kind of like a weird hodgepodge of building structures and architecturing designs. Because again, it, it, I think because Havana is a port, you have a whole bunch of cultures intervening into that city. So I kind of just went with Google search, found some pictures. Mainly I use Overwatch too. Mainly I use the uh, map Havana. So I use that mostly for the structures here. But then we kind of venture off to this back corner where there's a motion simulator inside a cotton shop. This building in particular was designed after I think Anno 1800 because their buildings are pretty isometric type of feel to them so I use that isometric I can't even say it isometric feel that I use that as my reference it's really cool actually what games you can use to reference to kind of help you with Parkitect stuff especially so Lego sets help um, isometric art helps um, other building type of games help, like SimCity helps, um, Anno 1800, Overwatch, things like that, because they all have like, like a cartoon style to that, and Parkitect has that as well, so they kind of like have that same uh, design thread, so I use that. And then over here is the main fort. I forgot what the fort's name was, because I didn't think to look this up before talking about it. But I know this, this is a fort in Havana. has a lighthouse. Again, I, I modeled this after the one from the game, from Overwatch 2. But I just kind of made my own type of fort. And it was kind of the perfect thing to have for my drop coaster. Which is, I think, just drop in Spanish. I think, yeah. La, the, the drop or got, gato, gata. I'm butchering it again because I'm not a Spanish-speaking person. I'm just not. But 
I wanted to have some like um, just a generic name, but I kind of do like my layout that I designed. It's kind of sprawling all over the place. I like the drop in the beginning. There's there's excitement right off the bat. Honestly, this is probably a pretty good credit to earn if, for a coaster enthusiast. Um, the other things I did, um, added this um, top spin just to fill in the back corners. But the top part was the, I would say, the hardest thing to kind of put together. Yeah. And then we had to do the staircase down. Now, funny thing is, I thought this map would have a elevator spawn in. So apparently not. So I was mistaken when I started this map that the elevator was going to be a thing. And I was going to put the elevator, hide it inside a building or something, and hide it underground and have the guests go up and down it. But no elevator, so they have to ride these pesky stairs. But fortunately, no one in Parkadect is in a wheelchair, so we don't have to really follow the um, ramp rules or making ramps. But everybody else here is able. And then we have ourselves a little dinky little, um, well, what are we doing next? As I'm just kind of just looking at everything. Um, bottom part. So yeah, I built the bottom part. We have added a brewery because I think another industry type of thing helps, especially for like a Havana type of theming. Again, I pulled this like brewery from the Overwatch 2 map and Anno 1800. And then these buildings also were just ripped from uh, Anno 1800 as well. Again, very, very good resource for city building stuff. I highly recommend you using that as a, a good reference. Again, Art Station also is a very good reference uh, website too. I've, I've already sounded its praises for this many times now. Art Station, great resource for anything that you're working on that is like creatively based. So they have material like samples and other things. I can just go on. I digress. So I also, um, what's the thing? I, I built this little boat, this little fishing boat to kind of populate my harbor. Plus with this uh, sailing ship ride, kind of worked out. And then I cheated a little bit underneath everything. There's two rides. There's a Gravitron and a double inverted swing because I needed the guest generation. And this actually helped a lot. And also I did some advertising to get that boost of the last bit of people. And yeah, this is the whole map of my little Havana. I'm quite happy with the results. I would have loved to done Actually, I don't think I would have added anything else. Everything else for the, of the map seems solid to me. I feel comfortable finishing it. Uh, my favorite thing so far is this gradient thing I did with the mountainside just to give some different type of style versus some of the other rocks I've done before. And the fort was a fun thing to work on. And then figuring out these coasters kind of sprawling across the uh, water and the harbor area. Again, Havana doesn't sit on a gigantic cliff in real life, so this is a very whimsical, imaginative version of Havana. So, take it with a giant grain of salt. But I think it's a kind of fun way to change this scenario, because when I opened this scenario, the first thing that I thought of was tropical for some reason, because I saw the bottom part here, because there's palm trees here. So I'm like, yeah, this is a tropical map. I don't. Let's go make something that I've never done before, so Havana was one of it. One of that. So let's so uh, save the map. I need to actually type in finished because that's what we do here. Fin I think I capitalized it. Yes, I do. Finished. Oops, I didn't even know how to spell finished. It's with a CH. No, SH. Jeez. Where's my. Oh, there it is. Okay, finished. Wait, do I actually say finished? Finished? Oh, I say finished. I say it in past tense. Gotta remember, it kind of make my things kind of. Um, thing okay save and then let me double check that it saved yeah it saved and then we're gonna go see what the map oops let's go see what the map gives us i think i know what it is i think it's just the entrance buildings that plop down on the map nothing too fancy yeah it's just a very simple trophy plop down and then this should reveal our my last map actually there's two more maps zalgonio and then the bonus map afterwards which is over here oh look at 26. Oh, so I can just play it now because I got the gold uh, requirement. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't remember that. But the next map we're probably going to touch is Robo Park because um, it should be done first before I touch Zalagonio. Zalagonio should be, my, be well, it's going to be the last of, uh, second to last map because there's a bonus map if you already don't know it. But 
yeah. So let's see here, build a state, uh huh. I think I'm gonna do some type of cyberpunk theme to it because Sylv did a very art deco feel to it, which was great. I love the aesthetic of like this future, re future retro space type of thing. But I feel like I wanna go more grittier and I think the cyberpunk feel slash not necessarily Tron, but just more grittiness to it. So cyberpunk would be that match fallout is not the same because fallout is a future retro style because that's 1950s future no i think i'm gonna go with a a yeah i'm gonna go with a cyberpunk i'm gonna try maybe focus on making giant facade buildings show buildings maybe with some dark rides and a whole bunch of coasters i know there's coasters there's a lot of coasters you can get from this um deal uh, not the dlc this map but yeah this is the next map we're gonna do um, also, uh, some updates on the channel. Um, I am working on the Diorama build challenge for the months of March to April. And it's going to be the, um, what's the coaster? It's the Grizzly River, not Grizzly River Run, oh my goodness. It's the Grizzly, um, Grizzly Gulch coaster from, uh, Hong Kong. And I'm going to be building that. But if you want to see updates and maybe some special behind the scenes stuff, I will be posting more stuff on my Patreon to make it more interesting. Because I've been slacking on my Patreon for the past um, year, probably more than that. I'm going to put more content on there about that project because that will, I'm just going to show you more in-depth details of when I process on designing stuff. When I go from my blue sky to my blocking and my color choices to maybe environment and then going from that to my final set project and then I'll also post a time lapse of that coaster later on the YouTube channel when that's done but you'll see more detail on the Patreon so if you guys want to join the Patreon you can the link in the description is below I'm going to thank for the th say thank you to all the patrons that have been with me anyway and thank you so much for sticking around with my lackluster patreon thing thank you so much for just sticking with me but i'm going to try to focus on making that a little bit better and we'll just see what 2024 brings us but yeah um i have nothing else to say and close this off but uh thank you guys for watching uh the next episode will be robo park and i'll see you guys in the next episode bye